In this video, we're going to show you how to set up Logic Pro X with SessionWire. It's very straightforward to get up and running streaming audio with this first setup. Uh, first, we're going to start with some basic settings for Logic. So we're going to navigate to the Project Settings menu and go to General. And we're going to uncheck only load plugins needed for project playback. Now, this will allow all of the plugins to remain running in the, the case of receiving audio and logic. We're also going to head to the audio menu by visiting Logic Pro X, Preferences, and Audio. And we're going to flip to the General tab, and we're going to turn off Input Monitoring only for the Focus track. And that'll allow us to leave one or two of these tracks in input mode without having to have them selected. It's very handy. And you'll notice that my buffer size is very low. You can run it whichever buffer size you want to. And the sample rate for this project is 48K, but you can use whichever sample rate you would like. Uh, jumping in, I've got some drum stems already set up here. If I hit play, Robin's not going to hear them because they're not routed to session wire. He'll just hear them through my open talkback mic. There we go. Thanks. I don't think I'll use those on my track. Yeah, doesn't sound very clean. Uh, thanks to uh, our friends at Telefunken for letting us use these tracks for these videos. They do sound really good. Robin just can't hear it yet. So uh, very straightforward. In Logic, everything is uh, everything defaults to the stereo out, and governing that stereo out is this purple stereo out track. So all of my tracks are funneling to stereo out, and all I have to do is place the session wire send plugin at the end of my effects chain on the stereo out channel. And Robin will be able to hear the audio I'm streaming to him because session wire defaults the HQ audio source to the session wire send plugin. So I'm feeding session wire with the send plugin and Robin is going to hear it straight out of his built in inputs or his interface because he's chosen that as his HQ audio destination. He doesn't need to have a DAW open on his end. So. Robin, give me the thumbs up if you can hear this. Now you'll notice that on Robin's end, we can't hear it, but on Robin's end, there's probably a delay happening. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, slight delay because this microphone is still open and I'm playing the drums through monitor. So let's turn on the auto mute function in Session Wire. Session Wire receives a trigger from the send plugin to mute audio this microphone on playback and playback stop it'll open that channel again so now it should be nice and clean for robin sounds good right on so this is the easiest way to get up and running streaming audio session wire defaults to your system preferences for audio input and output in my case it's my audio interface which I'm using as a microphone. This microphone is plugged into channel one of my interface. And I'm using the interface as my speaker or my listening device. You can use whatever you'd like. You can set it up exactly like any video conferencing software and you'll be able to start speaking to whoever is on the other end. The HQ audio stream defaults to the SessionWire Send plugin as its input and your system output as the output. So if somebody were to stream you audio, it would automatically stream to your output. Any questions? Just kidding, we'll move on here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, if I want to receive Robin's audio into my session, I need to put a receive plugin in here somewhere. So Robin, would you mind playing some audio for a second? We'll just Not see all. what happens. Yep. Perfect, so I can hear that but I'm hearing it because it's coming straight out of my interface, not because it's going into my logic session. So to get the audio into my logic session, down here in the mixer, which you can access with this button, I'm going to click Options, Create New Auxiliary Channel Strip. And this channel strip, I'm going to label Session Wire HQ Receive. And its output is stereo out, which is what we want. And you'll notice that there's feedback because it's set to the same input as my microphone. Now it does need to see some sort of input in order to work. So I'll set it to a different one. And I'm going to place 
the session wire receive plugin on this track. Now that will actually block the input from the microphone inputs that I've selected, so there won't be any feedback regardless. And I can put this fader up to zero. And in session wire, I'm going to change the HQ audio destination to the session wire receive plugin so that when Robin streams audio to me, it will show up in this track right here. And we're going to talk about a problem that will arise when he does that. So Robin, send her over. Here we go. Great. You better turn down the delay on that. Yeah, so Robin is hearing a delay because he's hearing his local playback and the audio that he's streaming to me going back to him. You can see that right here. When he played that, this meter lit up and this one lit up as well. And this channel has the Session Wire Send plugin on it. So we need to change our routing a little bit. And the way that I like to do this is I'll create another aux channel strip. I'm going to label it Mix. And I'm going to take all of the audio that I want to stream to Robin. And I'm going to change the output to a bus. And I usually use 32 as my mix bus. Oh, and it creates this guy here. I'm going to delete that before we move on. Delete. And I'm going to uh, delete anyway, yes. And I'm going to change the input of my mix bus to bus 32. Put the fader up to zero, and I'm going to slide the send plugin onto my mix bus so that now when Robin streams audio to me, it will come in the receive channel and go out the stereo out channel, which no longer has the send plugin on it. Fire away. Fire away. Any delay? Nope. Sounds Perfect. good. Excellent. So that was pretty easy. Pretty easy, yeah, to bring audio into your session and send it out without feedback loops. This is how we recommend setting up your session. Of course, there are other ways. You can bus everything out using sends. Um, it's really up to you. This is just the basic way. Now, we're going to route all of our talk back through Logic as well. At the moment, we're talking directly through session wire. I'm using my interface again as a microphone and as my output. So there's no audio for my talk back going through Logic, but we're going to change that right now. I'm going to add a new auxiliary channel strip, and I'm going to add another new auxiliary channel strip. I'm going to make them both mono. Aux3, I'm going to label session wire, talk back, send. And this next one, I'm going to label session wire, talk back, receive. And on each of these, I'll place the respective session wire plugins. Session wire, talk back, send. There we go. I can close that. And session wire, talk back, receive. Now, for the session wire, talk back, send channel, I'm going to mute that because I don't need to hear anything coming out of that. And the input is set to my microphone. So if I open this plugin, we can see that I tap this microphone and talk into it. There is signal. And for the session wire receive, the talk back receive, it's already routed to stereo out. So as soon as I change my settings in session wire, talk back, send plugin, Robin should still be able to hear me. I can. And if I change the speaker to session wire talk back receive, I can hear Robin in logic now. Check one, two. And we see signal show up right here. Now, this is how you can route audio in and out of Logic. Of course, lower buffer sizes will be better for talkback. A higher buffer size will result in more delay in your voice coming over the stream and lining up with the video. But you need to do what you need to do for your session. If you're working on a, a mix session and you need higher buffer sizes, use a higher buffer size. Any questions? So interesting to point out that I don't have to do anything related to talkback plugins on my end whatsoever. I can use whatever talkback setup I want on my end. It's completely independent of what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. We've set up session wire so that again, it defaults to your system in and outs first. So you shouldn't have to change any settings in session wire to get up and running unless you're using something like a Pro Tools HDX system, which if you're using Logic, you won't be. Um, but if you absolutely must route your talkback through Logic and you need to receive audio 
the HQ Audio into Logic, this is how we recommend setting up. You can download the templates on our support site. You can also reach out to us at support at sessionwire.com if you have questions. And we'll see you next time. See you later.